your tired and bring your shame Bring your guilt and bring your pain Don't you know that's not your name You will always be much more to me And every day I wrestle with the voices that keep telling me I'm not right But that's all Good morning, everybody. Welcome to service this morning. I don't know about you, but I really enjoy those custom countdowns. This gives us kind of an overview of things that go on in the church that we don't always see. So thank you to my uh, son-in-law who puts those together, Austin, and all the people who take the videos and, and pictures for them. Thank you very much for doing so. Stand with me if you would, please. I would like for you to find somebody who is not in an orange shirt and say, I'm just kidding. You could say hi to them, too. Let's turn and greet each other, please. Let's lift our voices together this morning in praise of our God. From the rising of the sun to the ending of the day, one name alone be praised. Every nation tries. Yeah. 
our praise. You may be seated. So I don't have a regular script for announcements like we normally would, other than this. So this is your script. Welcome. Here's your announcements. We're not going to read to you. Yeah, I have no idea what's going on. You, well, you've been a counselor at camp. Yeah. So, and another one next week? Yes. There's been kids' camps going on at um, Water's Edge, and it's been amazing to see how God's moving in these kids' lives. Young age. It, young it begins age. at a very young age. So, so I told Jerry, we talked about it this week, and we don't want announcements to just be like a commercial. Do you even remember what commercials are like in television? That's how old we are, people, if you remember commercials. They're used to streaming now, right? We don't do commercials. I mean, Hulu does it. Hulu does, okay. So instead of a script, instead of reading to them, what are we here for? It's, it's an invite to you. What are you here for this morning? You know, it, it's a progression. We're going to worship. We're going to talk to him in conversation, in prayer. We're going to listen from him. We're going to look at his word. Maybe you're here because you're hurting. Maybe you're here because you had an awesome week. But why are you here? This morning, we don't want to interrupt what God is doing. So let's pray. Miriam's going to lead us in prayer. And let's just invite God to do what he does, right? Let's pray. If you guys all bow your heads. Father, we come here humbly at the throne for you. I pray that today will be a sufficient worship for you. I pray for those who are going on this mission trip because I know this is amazing and it's awesome that a group of people from our church get to go and serve you. I pray for their travels and I pray for the travel travels of those who are leaving today. God, I'm so thankful. We're so thankful as we come to a close of celebrating time with family, celebrating the freedom of this country that you allow us to be in. I pray that that time was full of family and full of love and your fruits. I pray for the one person or many here who do not know you. I pray that they will open their hearts to you because I know that was the best decision I could have ever made in my life and they will come to you with open arms because our primary calling in life is to be raised to him above all else. And none of this would ever be possible without the grace of your God and we, of you God, we are so beyond thankful for you and we pray all these things in your mighty name, amen. You know this chorus with me. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. In this sermon series, Daring Faith, we've heard the stories of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, and today we're going to hear about Joshua. They each had such a strong faith because they had complete confidence in the God who called them. It wasn't based on what they could see. It was based on what they knew to be true of God. So this morning, I want you to hear a few scriptures from my favorite book of the Bible, Book of Psalms. Some truth about our God. And let's build our faith on that this morning. Psalm 18, I love you, Lord. You are my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my savior. My God is my rock in whom I find protection. He is my shield, the power that saves me, and my place of safety. I wait quietly before God, for my victory comes from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation my fortress where I will never be shaken. 
come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come to him with thanksgiving. Let us sing psalms of praise to him, for the Lord is a great God, a great king above all gods. Sing with me. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood. Trust the sweetest frame, but holy lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other around is sinking sand. All other around is sinking sand. is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand, when everything around me is shaken, I've never been more glad, I put my faith in Jesus, cause he's never let me down, he's faithful through death. So why would he fail now? He won't. He won't. I've still got joy in chaos. I've got peace that makes no sense. So I won't be going under. I'm not held by my own strength Cause I built my life on Jesus And He's never let me down He's faithful in every season So why would He fail now? He won't Aren't you thankful for that church? He won't, he won't fail, he won't fail, he won't, he won't, he won't fail, he won't fail. is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand, when everything around me is shaken. I've never been more glad, I put my faith in Jesus, cause he's never let me down, he's faithful through so why would he fail now? He won't. He won't. He won't fail. He won't fail. I'm gonna make it through 
As we go to prayer, I'm going to invite you to be seated. If you'd like, you can come and kneel at the altar here. I would just, I would challenge you with this. We've sang of his goodness already this morning, and I know we may have needs that we want to bring before him. That's okay. That's the invite that he gives us. But let's begin with praise. Let's begin and let's end with a reminder of his goodness. Let's praise him. Sandwich your needs in between there, but go into it with praise and come out of it with praise. I I have a few um, prayer needs that I I want to make you aware of. Kim Vincent has been dealing with cancer uh, for since she's been here uh, for a while now. And Kim Vincent passed away, I believe it was last night, this morning. Oh, okay. So, but pray for, pray for, um, for their family. Um, she's been dealing with it for a while, but that, that doesn't make it hurt less, does it? Um, Judy Nixon is in the hospital. If you'll pray for her as well. Also, I want to make mention of some friends of ours. Um, Carol, her husband, Bob's not, not doing well. Friends of Lynette and I, and um, just struggling. And um, I just pray that, that they would see Jesus at, at work. So if you want to come and kneel at the altar here, if you want to come in and just tell him of his goodness, thank him. You're invited to do so. Bring your needs before him. If that's an uncomfortable thing, that's okay. You can stand where you're at. You can kneel. You can sit. You can go to the back and, and just kind of be by yourself in your own, own little zone if you want. Well, let's just have some conversation with him in a minute here. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me All my days I've been held in your hand From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head Oh, I will see of the goodness of God All my life all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will see of the goodness. Gracious God, we do thank you for your goodness, the ways that you've shown it to us already in our lives. Lord, the fact that you had a plan for us, you had an intention for us before we were even born, since the beginning of time, you already had a plan for me. And you you had a perfect will. I've made some choices that, that, that have pulled me aside from that plan, but you continue to extend grace. You continue to offer your mercy and and realign me with that. Thank you, God, for the way that you've been in my life. Thank you for the way that you've been with each of us here. I don't even think we've noticed it many times that it was you that was at work. Lord, in those moments that we haven't seen, make us aware, Lord. Make us known. Make your presence known to us so that we could recognize it's you. And Lord, as, as we've sang of your goodness, we've all, we also recognize, Lord, I acknowledge this morning that all good things come from you. And if there is to be any remedy for any of the, the struggles and the issues that we face, it's going to come from you. And thank you, God, that you would give us that kind of relationship that you care, that you love us enough that we can come to you with our personal needs. We have needs represented here, Lord. We've, we've lost loved ones. Some of us are hurting physically. We have some in the hospital. We have some who are, who are struggling physically. And we're reminded these bodies are temporary. But you have a plan. You have a purpose, even through the, the times when we don't see it, the pains, the struggles, the, the things that we face here on this, this earth. You have a purpose. We don't always see it, but you have a plan. And God, as, as Jerry's already mentioned this morning, these faithful servants of yours, they have trusted you and followed you with a trusting faith, with a daring faith that looked to you, uh, trusting, moving forward in what is unseen. God, we come to you with those needs. Some of them that we've mentioned, others, Lord, that are represented here that we have not mentioned. And Lord, as, as we 
pray this morning here in this place, I pray that you would be with those that couldn't be with us, those that are on the mission trip that have already begun serving there in, in that camp that, that Pastor Tyler will be speaking at this morning, our team already um, at work um, relationally with folks down there in Kentucky. Lord, that you'd be with, uh, with Pastor Allen and Pastor Jan as they're traveling. Give them renewal. Give them rest. Lord, may they really know how much they are loved and appreciated by their family that is here. Give them rest, Lord. And for those that are traveling holidays, we understand, Lord, it's busy, it's chaos, but sometimes it makes us more weary. I pray that we would find rest this week and Sabbath anxiety-releasing Sabbath on this day that would draw us to intimate relationship with you. Lord, you are so worthy of our praise. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your love for us. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Well, it really is good to, to be with you this morning. Man, I feel short every time we put this up here. I forgot to tell you that I don't usually use this one. But we'll get through it. We really, I truly, read your, your announcements. This is, I, we have so many details in here, and, and Ann puts, puts good time into this to make this available. So, so if you want to see what's going on in life with the church, there's exciting things going on. We, we, we don't just stay busy for the sake of staying busy. Um, we are accomplishing a lot for the kingdom, and you can find your details in, in your worship folder there. Um, Pastor Allen and Pastor Jan are traveling. Pastor Tyler and Pastor Bree are in Kentucky already. We can call her Pastor Miriam. You're, you have your district or your local license now on behalf of our church, so we'll do that. We'll call you Pastor Miriam. Thank you for sharing with us this morning. So all that's left is Jerry and I. <laughs> You're stuck with us. So nobody is more pleased to see you here than the two of us because it makes worship rather awkward when it's just the two of us. So good to have you with us this morning. I, um, my wife, she, she had a nightmare that, I know she's laughing already. She had a nightmare last night that I was preaching and I had a sermon illustration I was trying to make that was going horribly wrong, and I called her and others, and I took them back behind, and they're going to prepare for this illustration. It's just, it's just failing. It's not working. And they're, they're like stuck back in there. It's a bread room. It's a room full of bread, I guess. And she's in there with, who else was with? Who was the other? You don't remember, yeah. And a few of them are there, and, and, and then her cousin came in, and this, is going, this illustration is going so bad, her cousin came up and, and beat me up, <laughs> and, and it just fell apart. So I, I learned from her dream. Number one, my wife dreams about bread. <laughs> she really likes her carbs, and I'm so glad that Betsy's in Alaska, right? She lives in Alaska. Yeah, so I'm glad that she's not here. This is the one time I don't want one of her family members here because I don't want to get beat up during this service. So hopefully it's none of you, though, in, instead. <laughs> so we've been looking at these um, at, at daring faith, those that we've seen in Scripture that would represent... I, I, wanna, I, I'm, I get hung up on words sometimes, sometimes a little too much. And <laughs> Lynette's shaking her head, yes, um, I don't want you just to hear the word faith when we hear daring faith. I don't want you to hear that these have been, have been folks from the Bible, men of the Bible, who have operated solely from that trusting kind of faith, not just in that definition of the word. 
I, I want you to hear that they have been trusting, yes, and it has been what is unseen that they have pursued. It has been a faith that does trust in what is unseen, that trusts in God, but it's a, it's a greater faith than that. It's that kind of faith that then continues as in the word continues as, um, as more, as continuation, as perseverance, as commitment, as dedication. They were faithful. They dared. They did un- unbelievable daring things in the way that they continued to pursue God. Okay, so as we, as we look at one more, we're going to look at, at Joshua this morning. Last week, we, we looked at Moses. Now, if you were to back up just one chapter before we were at, we'll be in, in, in chapter one of, of, Moses, uh, of Moses, chapter one of Joshua. You know what? The other nightmare that we've had, okay, I'm just going to say it now. I, I can do this now before we go forward. Get it out there. The other nightmare that I've had numerous times as a pastor is that I'm preaching and that my teeth fall out. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? My teeth can fall out. I, I have a temporary. Uh, it just fell out a couple weeks ago. So the staff knows I have been plagued with this tooth thing. And I feel like I have this, this lisp. I just, so I can't talk. So I apologize if some words come out sounding different than what I intend. I have some words I know do not say because they sound very profane with my list. M- lisp. So I'll, I'll watch it. But we just we talked about Moses last week, and, and so we're we're just on the tail that Moses has just. In fact, if you look, want to look at at chapter one, verse one of Joshua. Uh, I think you'll have most of these up on on the screen with you. You can follow along. Um, if not, it's found in, in Joshua chapter one. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' aid. That was Moses' aid was, um, was none, and Joshua was his son. Moses' aid, Moses, my servant, is dead. Or, I'm sorry, this is 2024. Moses has passed away. We're not allowed to say dead. Nobody's died in the past decade. We all say passed away now. God says it frankly. He's dead. Okay? He's dead. So, what is the commissioning? What is now going to take place? And that's the directive that the book of Joshua begins here with. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the, the Jordan River into the land I am about to give to them, to the Israelites. They have been wandering and waiting for 40 years. Their disobedience, God still had a plan, but their disobedience had led them to continue to chase their own desires. Over and over, I'm going to be honest, over and over, we read in, in, the, in the Scriptures how God continues to offer grace, how God continues to be merciful with the Israelites, and how even now, He's waiting for this generation of those that were unfaithful, for them to die off, and now this next generation is finally going to be able to cross this river and enter into the Promised Land. But we see so much grace and so much mercy that God gives to them I got to be honest, there's a lot of times that I say, God, why would you do that? The Israelites were idiots at these times. They were so disrespectful. Or they, how do you not get this? God performs this amazing miracle at this moment, and then immediately they jump over to this next thing that they do wrong. It's like, did you not just see God do this? How did you, how did you miss that? Do you, do you not realize that that God that did that can continue and wants to continue to do these amazing things for you? And this is not just an overnight oops moment. Forty years. Forty years that they wander around. It's like circling around this thing and God's got this ready and waiting for them and they just keep wandering around missing out on what God had in store for them. So Joshua is going to be that next leader. Okay, so as we begin this, though, I want us to understand, with each of these that we've looked at thus far, every time Alan is bringing this next one to us, I I get what they've done, and we've walked through that, but what we've done and what I want to do here with Joshua is I want to know who he was. I want to know his character. I want to know his personality. 
If you, if you look in the New Testament, you look at, at Paul and a lot of his writings, you can see a lot of Paul's personality that comes out in his writing. You can see moments where you, where you can sense that Paul is really excited. There's moments where he, you can tell he's a little frustrated, uh, when he's getting a little anxious or excited about things. You can see what really gets him moving, both pros and the cons. You see some frustration at points. With Joshua, who was Joshua? What was his character? What was he like? This leader who's now taking over for, for Moses, if he's going to be one of these models, one of these that live in daring faith, what's he going to demonstrate for us today that we can, that we can follow? So the first I want to look at this, they're, they're going to be up on the up on the slides, you know what, if you're one of those that is looking for, for a nap, the first one is follower, the second one is faithful, the third one is humble, the fourth one is trusted, the last one is obedient. If you need to go ahead and now you have the notes and want to leave early and get to the sizzler first, <laughs> go ahead, you have all the, all the points there. But the first one is this, he was a, fo- a faithful follower, a loyal and faithful, trusted follower. If you look at, at, at verse 5, Joshua, no one will be able to stand against you as long as you live. For I will be with you as I was with Moses. I will not fail you or abandon you. So Moses had been leading for years, for an entire generation before this. He had been leading the Israelites. Now, Moses, God bless him. I feel bad for Moses. My, my heart hurt for Moses last week as we were discussing Moses, but what Moses is leading is, is these disobedient, um, kind of self-serving Israelites who are missing out on what God has in store for them. And as Moses continues to lead, now Joshua is going to be the one who will take over. But this entire time, Joshua had been there with Moses, serving under Moses. He's been watching He's been growing. He's been learning. Think about this. For 40 years, he does this. So so Joshua would have been this amazing leader, but yet for 40 years, he did not lead. He comes to this leadership role now with this prerequisite of, of observing, of following We look for great leaders, and when we look for the next great leader in something, we look for those that have leadership ability. In fact, don't we often look to the front? If we're going to, I actually watched some of the debate. If you want to call it that, if you you want to call it a a debate, I won't even get into it because I just, wow. All I can say is wow. Those are our two presidential candidates. And I'm reminded of the Old Testament where we see some leaders and I'm just, I can still find rest and peace of knowing that we have seen some, some, cra- some, some leaders in Scripture that we read about and the world still continued despite those leaders. Thank you, God, that, that you are that God. But let me say this. Can you imagine if Joshua were running for president? We mentioned it in Sunday school this morning. Can you imagine if David were running for president? Because as we were looking at David this week, David continued to seek God in what he did, in everything that he did. And Joshua was one of those who was always following. He was willing to follow whatever God wanted of him. He was willing to follow Moses and, and follow his direction and his leadership for 40 years. When you're looking for a leader, you're looking for the lead, but yet, most, but yet Joshua was the follower. Do you hear that in, in this? If, if you want to be a faithful servant of God, if you want to live daring faith, Joshua is inclined to lead us to follow. I want to follow. In leading, I want to follow. It's a simple word, but yet there's so much involved with it because following demands other people more than it demands us. My dad, I don't know how much of this is actually accurate. 
It's a good story, though, so I'm, I'm, I choose to believe it. Some of the details might have grown over the years, but my dad, he grew up at a Wesleyan church in, uh, in Detroit, and I guess in, in the evening service it was, the, the teens would be in the, in the front row, and, and he's told this story where, where the, the pastor would ask for a testimony, and one teen would stand up, I love the Lord with all my heart, and I'm, I'm going to follow him the rest of my life, and then that teen would sit down. And then what does the next teen say? I love the Lord with all my heart, and I'm going to follow him all the rest of my life. <laughs> and then that one would sit down. And they go down the whole row, and you've got a whole row of teens who all have a pretty similar testament. I love the Lord with all my heart, and I'm going to follow him the rest of my life. If we could actually take that one simple phrase, though, and really take it to heart, that we'd be willing to follow. Joshua was willing to follow the second, we find, the second one we find in here is that in, in following, this following was a faithful commitment. He was, he was faithful to do what God was asking in, of him, faithful to follow. Okay, so I'm going to back up just a little bit here to verse 4. Your territory will extend. He, remember, he's just told him, this is the instructions, prepare. I'm finally, after all this wandering, we're about to enter into the promised land. I'm going to guide you across that. You're going to be the leader. In verse 4, your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon and from the great river the Euphrates, all the Hittite country, to the great sea on the west. No one will be able to stand up against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. I, I, I'm going to repeat that one there for a moment. I will never leave you nor forsake you. And we're going to read this more than once. This is not me stuttering. This is not me repeating or losing my spot here as I read Scripture. Be strong and courageous. You hear that? Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their forefathers to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Twice. Two verses in a row. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my, all the law my servant Moses gave to you. Do not turn to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Here we are again. Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. He doesn't have a, a memory problem here. I will often repeat things that I forget that I've already said. You already told me that. Trust me. You want to you make a teenager frustrated? Tell them something twice. Problem is, they get their, dem their demonstration from me. Don't tell me twice. I got it the first time. But yet I probably didn't get it the first time. God is reminding him over and over, be courageous. And that's what Joshua did. It, think about this. If he could walk with Moses for 40 years in what they did, if they could witness all that these Israelites had witnessed and experienced, for all these years of wandering, and now, he's going to be, and now the torch is going to be handed to him to lead this and to guide these people, you'd have to be pretty faithfully committed. You see, to be faithful means that you trust in a way that you take courage, that you, that you move forward with a, with a strength that you can't fabricate. Courageous, faithful, following God demands that we trust Him. It demands that we put our faith in what we cannot see. It means, are you ready for this? Some of you might need to brace yourself for this. It means you ha may have some things that you don't know. Are you one of those that likes to know? Why? Well, just because I want to know. It's gotten us into trouble in mankind's history before. To want to have, to want to know what God knows, to think like God thinks, I, there's, there's a, I give a healthy respect to being knowledgeable. 
But what is our intention for why do we want to know? If it just gives us the peace and the satisfaction of knowing, I would challenge you with this. There's a beauty and a joy in the mystery of trusting God by faith. I like it. It's fun sometimes to have no idea what's going on and be okay with that because I serve a God who does know what's going on. And and sometimes that feels really restless, but that's the beauty of the relationship He has for us is when we faithfully trust Him, when we faithfully have courage, you you can't create that or fabricate that kind of courage. You can't fabricate that kind of strength. Only He can can create that within us and for us. That's the beauty of that gift that he gives us. Joshua's faithful. But to be faithful, though, to, to be a follower like he had been in the time that he served alongside Moses, to be faithful to this extent, now to this point of leadership, you have to understand you would have got to be humble in this process. This is the kind of leadership that, that I would like to follow. This is the kind of leader that I want to be. And honestly, even be beyond leadership, you may be one of those that says, I'm not really much of a leader. I'm not that person. I don't want you to mistake leadership for, um, for being just the person up front. Because you can lead from behind. You ever heard of leading from the second chair? You ever lead within the household, but you don't have to be the sole person up front to lead within an organization. Maybe it's within your workplace. Maybe it is within your home. Maybe it's within your family, your extended family. You can be a leader without being that one person that's in charge. That's not what leadership is all about. To me, leadership is demonstrating what do we want others to follow. And to do that, we don't want them to follow us We don't want to demonstrate us. I don't want you to to replicate Scott. If I'm going to humble myself, I want want you to replicate the Jesus that you see through Scott. That's what I'm after. If you never see me in the equation, then I'm totally cool with that. That's great. But if you saw Jesus, then I know that's what my intention was. If you look at verse 11, let's let's keep reading here. I'm I'm back up verse, verse 10 first. So Joshua ordered the officers of the people, go through the camp and tell the people, get your supplies ready. Three days from now, you're going to cross into the Jordan here to go in and take the possession of the land that the Lord your God is giving you for your own. There's, this is finally going to happen. This is kind of a big thing. If you've been wandering around for 40 years, um, it, this is a whole new generation that's going to be able to, to experience this. You know, Joshua and Caleb are the only ones that would experience this in this way that would see this promised land like this? Go through the camp, gives them the instructions. Verse 12, but the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh, Joshua, uh, Joshua said to them, remember the command that Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave to you. The Lord your God is giving you rest and has granted you this land. Your wives, your children, and your livestock may stay in this land that Moses gave to you east of the Jordan, but all of your fighting men, fully armed, must cross over ahead of your brothers. See, they've made a, a, an agreement with Moses. Just prior to this, they made an agreement that they can actually continue on through this, you know, around the promised land, that they can have this section dedicated for them. The Israelites would possess this, and their, their task is that they agreed to before God with Moses, we're going to go and we're going to help you take ownership of this land, this promised land, and, and you're going to cleanse this, and that's what they did. Um, Joshua literally led them as they went from, from place to place, preparing this promised land for them, removing all the evil, the sin, all the struggle, so that this would be the, the promised land that God intended for them. But he's challenged these tribes to join them in that. So here's your task. You have to go help them do this, and then when this is completed, you may rest. You'll find rest in the place that we've set aside for you. So you're supposed to go and help your brothers until the Lord gives them rest as he has done for you and until they too have taken possession of the land that the Lord has, God has given for them. And after that, you may go back and op- occupy your own land for which Moses, the servant of your Lord, gave you just to the east of the Jordan toward the sunrise. 
So what you see happening here is Joshua humbling himself in such a way that he continues to trust and continues to move according to, what is it? God's plan. Finally, the plan that that they had heard of, finally the promise that God had made is going to be next step lived out. So Joshua gives them the directive, go through to the camp, tell them to be ready with the, precision, with the provisions. In three days, you're going to take possession of this land. God is going to give you this land. Be ready. Maybe that's a challenge for us. Maybe the challenge is this. God is ready to do the next amazing thing, Richfield. Are you ready? Are you in a position where, where you would remove yourself from enough that we can see what God wants to do, that you could back yourself out of the light enough to see what God is ready and waiting to do. See, when Joshua did this, it was Joshua saying, this is what God's going to do. It wasn't Joshua stepping up to the front with his firm, arrogant confidence because now he's strong and courageous and he's going to go in and he's going to do this. No, this is Joshua saying, are you ready? God's going to do the next thing. Are you ready for what God's going to do? Be ready because in three days, I already know. He said it. He promised it. This is what God's going to do. And this is your part in it. This is your role in it. That was the challenge that Joshua was giving them. But if you want to follow, if you want to be faithful in this, this can't be about you. Joshua was never looking for his fame. He was never looking for his name to be known. He was looking for God's plan to be fulfilled. He's looking for this promised land to be occupied the way God intended it. He he looked out among his people, and it's it's finally going to happen because he's seen you wander, and he's ready. He knows what God has waiting for you. He's just as excited to see you occupy that and take what God has ready and waiting for you. That demands humility. It it begins with it. It continues in humility, and it will see you through all the way to the end. Remain humble. But then we also see in verse 13, we just read that it demands trust. It goes kind of back to that question of, Why do we want to know? What do we want to know? How much do we need to know? At some point, we have to trust. At some point, you have to trust with faith that God is going to do what he says he'll do. Look at verse 13. Remember what Moses, the servant of your Lord, commanded you. The Lord your God has given you a place of rest. He has given you this land. He said he would do it, didn't he? If we were to back up, we would see that God made this promise. He made this agreement. And let's be honest, God God really got the short end of the stick on this agreement because he kept giving and giving and giving, and he wasn't receiving from them nearly as much as he's giving to them. I mean, he even gave them a pretty simple list. Follow my laws. You know, put me first. No other gods. Here's a list. And, And they couldn't even honor that list. And despite what they didn't do, and despite some of the things that they did do that he told them not to do, he continued to overwhelm them with blessing. The the plagues that that they had witnessed, the, the, the miracles he had performed. Anybody walk through a you know the Red Sea? Anybody else have one of those moments lately? I haven't. You know, you'd think that when you're walking through there and you see that water on both sides of you as the Israelites did, you'd think that when you endured those plagues that they faced, that that might turn you in a direction of saying, hey, he carried me through that. I can probably trust him to carry me through this next one. But they didn't. And you know what? As much as I think, oh, these these Israelites are idiots sometimes. He carried me through cancer. You'd think I would have trusted him with the next thing. He's carried me through financial struggles. He's carried me through divorce. He's carried me through so many losses and struggles and pains. You'd think I'd trust him for the next one. You know, and many of them I have. 
because and it, it has gotten me through. But I find this, that when you trust Him, it always seems to work out somehow. <laughs> Go figure, right? He promised this to them. He had this waiting for them. Remember, do you, hear, do you see that word in there in verse 13? Remember what Moses the servant, remember what Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you. Do you remember? Do you remember? That means this is not the first time that it's been told to you. Do you remember? Come back to it. Do you remember? Go back to it again. Remember that time when? Remember. Stay faithful in your trust. And the last we find in, in here is this. Joshua was obedient. I struggle with the word obedience in my Christian faith. I'm just going to, it's just an honest confession. If you look, we're look at verse, verse 17. We will obey just as Moses obeyed. I, this word, I, I feel like maybe, and maybe this is me getting hung up on words too much. Let, let me see if I can illustrate to, to say what I'm, because it's hard to come up with the exact words. I don't want my kids to obey me. I mean, yeah, I want them to do what I want, right? But I don't want them to obey simply for the sake of doing what I tell them, for the simple fact of obedience. I want my kids to, to honor me, to trust me, to respect me, to do what they do, to make the responses that they do, to, to do all of this because of the relationship that we have. This is not simply an obedience thing. Obedience seems to be so simple at times, and I want it to go beyond obedience. We see that Joshua obeyed in this, but this was not just the doing what God tells him to because God told him to version. When you back up and look at the others, when you have a faithful follower who is humbly serving and trusting God, that is perfectly the definition of the kind of obedience that God wants from us. He didn't give us the list of Ten Commandments and all the laws and the rules of the Old Testament so that we would simply check yes or check no, we did or we did not. If that were true, then we wouldn't have had the demand or God wouldn't have chosen for Jesus to come and be with us. It wasn't simply a matter of the law. Now, Jesus didn't come to, to abolish that. What did Jesus come to do? Remember what he said? I have come to what? To fulfill the law. It's the completion of it. So let's go back to this word obedience. Obedience does take place, and we want to obey. God does want us to obey, but the laws, the rules, the obedience is just a part of the completion of following, of being faithful, of being humble, of serving, of trusting. And these are all part of obedience. Understand here, as we, as we just read, this is not just for Joshua. Remember, he was the follower, but Joshua is now going to be the leader. Do leaders obey? Who do the leaders obey? Huh. Joshua, greatly concerned with obeying. That was his character. He's going to lead the people with an obedience kind of heart. I would encourage you to let each of these leaders that we've looked at, those that have followed God, those who have lived with a daring faith, take a little examination this week of how might we be able to pull from them. In what areas would we be able to have that kind of daring faith like they did? Would you stand with me as we pray? Father God, thank you for the testimony that Joshua had to be willing to serve so faithfully with Moses and then to take this, this role of leadership to trust you, to serve. He was a leader, but he was serving. 
Lord, to, to have that kind of dynamic character that He would seek Your will, that He would continue in, in Your plan for everything that You asked of Him to fulfill Your plan for His people. Lord Jesus, we want to be Your representatives in that way. Thank You for these that have given us uh, a model for how we can live a life of faithfulness. Lord, I pray that You'd go with us from this place today. And may you be glorified by what we say, by what we do, by the life experiences that we have in you this week. Amen. Have a great week.